Thank you. Well, despite more opportunities opening for South Carolinians to return to life as we knew it, Governor McMaster is reminding everyone the fight against the pandemic is not over. I sat down with the governor for a one on one interview about how it's going so far and what lies ahead. Throughout South Carolina, after Governor Henry McMaster's first order to begin closing parts of the state, one by one, schools, restaurants, gyms, activities, life as we knew it, came to a halt. After weeks of stopping our normal routines, to this week where there's movement again in society, the governor is reviewing his incremental approaches in both closing and then reopening the state. How do you answer your critics who say you're piecemealing? this before and piecemealing it going back? Well, they're, they're critics uh, for everything everybody does in, in uh, politics, I guess, uh, particularly in politics, but I, th I think the results w will bear us out. Governor McMaster says his approach in South Carolina has been very targeted and not a dramatic broad method he feels has been detrimental to other states. There's got to be such a fine line between freedom and security. So how have you navigated between giving people their liberties but yet calling for restrictions for their safety? Well, that's an easy question. If, uh, if you study the Constitution and know what it means, you realize that there are certain things that government can do and certain things it can't do, no matter how good somebody might think or how bad. There are limits on what a government can do. As we saw this past weekend, those freedoms literally created a party in the street. This video in Myrtle Beach went viral, showing people in golf carts blocking Ocean Boulevard. Some people point the finger saying, well, that's because we're opening up too soon. I believe that would have happened if we'd opened up next year. They'd still be doing that. One of the toughest unexpected emergencies to fix in this crisis has been and remains getting money to those not receiving a paycheck. With the sheer volume of people needing financial help, the South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce has been overwhelmed and desperate South Carolinians have waited six or more hours just to get through on the phone to file an unemployment claim. No one dreamed that the levels of application would rise as, as quickly as they did. It was, we had to go get more and more people. We started out with 29 people on the phones right at the beginning and every day we were looking for training people. It takes a couple of weeks to train somebody how to do that. Oh, there, and we, we regret and sorry for the, the backlog that, that we had. What can we do as a state if this takes another round and ramps back up again, or if something else hits us in the future? How do we better prepare for the next unknown thing that could be down the road? We know how to fight the virus much better now than we did then. So as we're opening up and resuming our, our speed, we have to be equally, if not more, careful about the spread. And that means all those social distancing, the hygiene, all those things that we've learned so well in the last couple of months. And far from over is the need to get an accurate count of cases, especially of those considered more at risk, something this week's relief package the governor signed will help fund. The testing and the tracking that we need to do now is paramount in our recovery process. So much of that, those resources are going to go to doing those kind of things, particularly out in the rural areas where uh, there's not, has not been a lot of testing going on. In looking ahead to one day when the governor will look back, how does he want to be remembered for the way he handled the COVID-19 crisis in our state? He was a governor who did a good job. Now to hear more in-depth answers to these questions and other topics I posed to the governor, go to WISTV.com for the full interview.